So today we're diving deeper into dreams. And so as I've already stated in, in previous videos, your dreams are messages to you on how you've been using your mind, the current state of your consciousness. They can be interpreted in the universal language of the mind, which is a language of images, in order to identify what that message is. So there is a particular language with these images. It has a form and function, just like all other languages, even mathematics and things. So there is a form and function to it. And when you understand that, then you will be able to understand what that message is. And I have other videos on that and on how to learn that in future videos to come to dive deeper into that. And, you know, other videos with actual symbols and breaking those down so you can learn that language for yourself. But there are also four other types of dreams outside of, not, not really outside of, but intertwined with the ability to just have a message coming to you on how you've been using your consciousness. And so it's kind of like how every single day or every, every single weekday is a day of the week, but not every single day of the week is a weekday or every single square is a rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square. Or just like how every single male is a human, but not every single human is a male. You can also apply that to that every single one of these four types of dreams, uh, lucid dreams, incubated dreams, precognitive dreams, and visitation dreams can have a message pulled from it as well on the state of your consciousness not every single dream that you have is going to be one of these four dreams. Now, the primary way of identifying if it is one of these four dreams, an incubated dream, a visitation dream, a precognitive dream, or a lucid dream, is the quality of the dream. The quality will be a little different. There'll be a more sense of realness to it. There'll be a, uh, there, there'll be, you'll have a more alertness within the dream and within each one there's a, a little difference to it that you can kind of just feel it's not anything you can really describe but it's something that you just kind of feel you feel that this dream is different there's a little more importance to this dream and so that's one of the first things that you can do in identifying one of these dreams so i just want to go over with this video and describe each one of these dreams so we'll start with the incubated dream <laughs> So like I said, every night you're getting these dreams, whether you remember it or not, you're having dreams. And if you do remember them, you're getting these messages. And whether you're interpret interpreting them or not, you're getting the message. And if you are interpreting, whether you're applying the message or not, and you're, if you're able to interpret them, then you're actually truly understanding the message. But then if you're applying that message into your life, then you are fully utilizing the capability of the purpose of having that message. Because then you are using that message to then improve and progress in your life and improve your quality of life. But maybe there's something, some type of issue that you want a specific answer for. You know, maybe there's some problem in your life. Maybe you've lost something. You know, just the other day, I, I just shared the idea of incubated dream. I didn't even share how to do it or the techniques that I use in order to make one happen. I just shared it with a coworker because they, they found out I, I wrote a book about dreams and taught people about dreams. And they just, I forget how it even came up, but I just mentioned about incubated dreams. And you can really, you can kind of mold the conversation that you want. And they, Apparently, they went and told a friend who had lost their wedding ring months ago. They came back and said, oh, my God, my friend, I told them about incubated dream. They had an incubated dream and found out exactly where their wedding ring was that they lost three months earlier. And so you can use it to find things that you've lost. You know, you can use it to you can ultimately use it to make vi the other three visitation dreams, precognitive dreams and lucid dreams to happen. And so there's a particular technique that we'll go into in the incubated dream video. So check that out. But um, essentially it is these essentially your dreams are coming from your subconscious mind and an incubated dream is just you telling your subconscious mind, OK, I know you're going to give me a message through my dream this night. I want the message to be on this or about this or an answer to this. And that's it. You're incubating the what the dream is going to be about. 
And so that'll take us to our next dream, which is a visitation dream. And lots of people have visitation dreams. It's actually like my most popular video by far is a visitation dream. I mean, the, the quality, the image quality is terrible. It's all like everything's blurry. There's not even a focus, but it is still my number one producing video as far as views by far. And that is because so many people have visitation dreams. Now, the majority of people have these visitation dreams with loved ones who have passed on. And the reason for that is because the loved one will identify the need for that to happen in order to uh, uh, facilitate that person's healing and uh, through their grief process, because that person really needs to know that this person is okay. And whether and I get messages from people all the time, whether they really know what, if it's real or not, it's still very comforting to, because there's still that, like I said, there's that, there's that feeling within, a, within each of these dreams. So there's a feeling of a little bit more real. So so whether they know it or not, they kind of know that this was a real experience. And then they, they're more at ease because they then often know that the person's okay. They all, you know, like if it's someone who died from like old, really old age or some type of illness, their last memory of them is being very either old or sickly and ill, but that's not how that person will usually come to them. It'll be a more healthy, a lot more healthy version. And so that alone, seeing them healthy and whole also helps alleviate that feeling of of grief and loss and and you know the compassion and empathy for the pain that that person might have been going through and things and so being able to provide that to the person who's still alive is often why that soul will then come to you and have that experience of a visitation dream but it doesn't have to be someone who has already passed on you know you or i can meet up in a dream tonight right now we can go to sleep and meet up in a dream you can sometimes enter other people's dreams or them enter your dreams that that's a very real experience that can happen and so when these things do happen then they are visitation dreams and you can incubate a visitation dream anytime that two souls meet up in a dream it is an incubate or a visitation dream. So kind of like think about to help understand it, think about the movie Inception. Inception got a lot of things right because they they consulted with the International Association for the Study of Dreams in order to understand dreams fuller and the reality of what's really going on with those people. And so they got a lot of things right with the, that's why I love it's one of my favorite movies. So think about Inception and think about how when he's sitting at when uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is sitting at the bar with the other person, all this wild stuff is going on. He's, he's telling them, he's telling him about all the different aspects. Now these are things. And so in the, in the dream with, with you understanding what's going on in the movie, all of those, you know, they call them projections, all of those projections, all right, they are aspects of that person's consciousness, but they, in the movie, they call them projections. All of those projections are just aspects of that one person's consciousness, because that's whose dream they're in. However, Leonardo DiCaprio is there as well, and he's not a projection of their consciousness. He is his own person. And so that is the difference of a regular dream and all the people in your dreams and a visitation dream, another soul coming into, an into your dream and experiencing your dream with you. So then you also have precognitive dreams. And precognitive dreams are when you are able to perceive future events within your dream. Now, a lot of people talk about deja vu and what is deja vu and deja vu is when you already are experiencing the event and realizing you dreamed about it before. So the realization of the connection between reality and dream or your waking life and dream experience when that when that awareness occurs in the experience and the dream has already happened, you call it deja vu. When you realize the connection between the two from the dream or right after you wake up, then it's a precognition because the other experience hasn't happened yet. So then you don't call it deja vu yet because it hasn't happened yet. You call it a precognition. And so the reason that this is capable is because in your dream, you're free, you're not in the physical plane, so time and space does not exist, so you can perceive different lines of probability. But we'll go further into that into the precognitive dreams video. Now, a lucid dream is where you are in the dream and you are aware, you are lucid. So you are aware that you are dreaming. And now when this occurs, 
you're able to facilitate and change things within your dream, but you can only change them to the degree that you're able to change and transform things within your own mind and consciousness. So for instance, like a lot of people, one thing like me, whenever for a long time, and still sometimes when I first become lucid, I'll just take off and fly. You know, when I very first started lucid dreaming, that happened every single time. Like, oh, I'm in a dream. And just would take off and fly. But there were still some times when I would, you know, sometimes I would shoo, bolt off like Superman, just super fast, super high, super far. And there were other times where I would just like jump really high and 300 feet, or I, or I can only hover slowly above the ground. That is because you can only, so flying represents freedom being free of the things and the thoughts and things that normally weigh you down the stresses of life that normally weigh you down being free of those so on the days when i really was free of those i could fly really far but on the days where i wasn't able to free my mind of those where i would get home from work and work would still come home with me then i would those would be the days where i would only hover above the ground even though i tried to fly as much as i can so you still are limited by the capabilities of what your mind can do so you can't just completely transform and change everything in a lucid dream you know but but you can and so you can do all types of things and one thing i love about lucid dreams is it helps me to remove the things within my way of the things that i'm wanting to manifest and help the different thoughts and ideas that i have within my consciousness help them to manifest into my life and so we'll really get into that further on into into lucid dreaming but these are some of the capabilities with it and so identifying a lucid dream is just knowing that you're lucid and most people who have lucid dreams, because a lot of people have lucid dreams. If there's ever a moment where you're in like a scary dream or a nightmare, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, I need to wake up, Ooh, wake up. That's because in that, in that moment, just before you woke up, you realized I'm in a dream. Since I'm dreaming, I can escape this. And I want to escape this because I no longer want to experience it. And I want to avoid it. So I will wake up, shoot, you come out of the dream. So it's all within an instant that you realize you're lucid and then you use that lucidity to change the dream, but by change, the change that you're making is a complete exit from it, a complete exodus from the dream. And so that's what you changed. But so you don't really, you don't really get to really get to experience being lucid in the dream, but you did become lucid. So you did experience a lucid dream. And so these are the four different types of dreams on top of just being able to take the message from the dream and interpret it. However, within all four of these types of dreams, you can then still, even a lucid dream that you've kind of changed, you can then still identify what the message is on how you've been using your mind and how to um, progress and evolve your consciousness further into the next steps of your learning and your soul growth and spiritual development. So if you want to know more about those, then check out those videos on incubated dreams, on visitation dreams, precognitive dreams, and lucid dreams. And I hope this video helped. And as always, I leave you in peace.